Week one is finally here. Bears preview is ready and set. And I have my good friend and special guest, Kenny. Kenny, Adam, well, I'm just going to call you Adam because you're my roommate and that's how we do things around here. So Adam, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm excited to be back. Talk a little Bears football. And so fun fact, Adam and I are going to be out in Denver, Colorado, watching the Bears in Mile High City uh, in three weeks. So you might see a couple tweets. You might see a couple Instagram reels. Stay tuned for that. But week one is finally here. Adam and I are ready to break it down for you guys. Week one, Soldier Field, Bears, 49ers. We got it all here for you. We're going to do a little game overview about the 2021 Bears and 49ers, followed by the injury report coming into this weekend. Three keys to the game and finally score predictions. Adam, are you ready? I think I'm ready, dude. Let's run it. All right. So let's do the offense, the Bears offense versus the 49ers defense, because I think that's going to be the big watch of the day for the Chicago Bears fans. You know, the 2021 Bears offensive rankings weren't sexy by any means. They were 24th in total yards offense in the NFL out of 32 teams. I'm still kind of shocked by that, to be honest, because Matt Nagy ran that offense and it felt like the Bears were always negative yards. I mean, Adam, I know I know that you probably feel the same. I'm holding my big ass lemonade. That's if anyone's wondering what I'm holding there. But I, I'm sure you're probably shocked by the Bears having the 24th total yards in 2021 offense. No, dude, it was abysmal. It was horrible to watch. It was it was quite <laughs> literally embarrassing. And I don't know if that was an expectation thing last year. Like all of us still had a little bit of hope, like a sliver of hope, especially with fields coming in. But uh, they were they uh, they were to the point of embarrassing last year. So I'd say that's higher than I thought it probably would have been, um, but much lower than it should have been. I agree. And well, I know that you love it. You're not wearing the hat right now, but run the damn ball <laughs> because yep, the Bears. Fan. The Bears were the 14th best rushing offense in the NFL last year behind David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert. And, but they did have the 30th passing offense in the NFL. So the Bears had some key offseason moves. They drafted guys like Braxton Jones, Vellis Jones Jr. They moved Jenkins to right guard, Borum to right tackle, brought in Lucas Patrick, who was the third best rushing, rush blocking center in the NFL last year, traded for Nikhil uh, Harry. Signed Byron Pringle, brought in St. Brown and offensive coordinator Luke Getze. Adam, out of everything that happened this offseason that you know of from just a Bears fan perspective, what are you most excited for for this offense after all the, the acquire ease of this offseason? Yeah, I'd like to see the offensive line mesh a little bit more. Uh, what I really liked in the preseason is, you know, Justin Fields gets late hit literally every single game. Finally, we got like one flag. Uh, but to see the offensive line like jump up and have his back and kind of go af after the defender who hit him, I couldn't remember the name or the game, honestly, but I do remember them sticking up for him, standing up for their quarterback. And Tevin Jenkins, I think it was that did that last year. Maybe it was Borum, I can't remember. But then you had Jermaine Effetti like running in and trying to pull him off and like, you know, don't do that. Push like pushed him, him over for protecting his quarterback and being defensive of his quarterback, which just pissed me off to like no end. So to see the offensive line, like seemingly like gelling kind of coming together. Um, Darnell Mooney was on Redline radio and he was talking about how like the difference in the culture and the atmosphere is night and day. Like it's completely different from last year. So it seems like there's, I, I think like big cat said, like, you know, they could be frisky this year. That's like the term that he used, which is one step below like dangerous, you know? So it's not like they're going to, they're going to surprise the entire league. I, you know, the expectations are pretty low, but um, there could be a, a couple games that they can make, I think, really close that people would count them out of, like the 49er game with uh, going against Trey Lance and him having his one of his first starts. And um, they could be a little frisky, right? And so I'd like to see that the offensive line gelling a little bit. I'd like to see them sticking up for their quarterback, especially when he gets late hit because it happens just way too often. And um, I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not too hyped about the young receiver core here. Like Byron Pringle is like basically your number two. That, that's That's pretty rough stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, Bellis Jones Jr. and him are, are wide receivers, uh, both wide receiver two. Darnell Mooney and St. Brown are wide receiver one. But again, that's not saying much, but St. Brown, you know, 6'5", comes from Luke Getze's former offense, but he's got butterfingers. Everyone's, everyone loves to make it known <laughs> that St. Brown's got butterfingers. But, you know, kind of going, in, going off of your comments, I also, I think that the Bears, you know how the Lions and Hard Knocks had, you know, Dan Campbell had grit on his, on his hat. 
we should have frisky on our <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was a perfect way to put it you know because like they're not like they're not like dangerous to the league yet but they could they could cause some trouble for a few teams that are that think they're going to either come into chicago or face the bears in general and get like an easy win i don't think I don't think this team is going to just be like, okay, easy win. You're going to stop the bears every time you play them. I think they'll play people close, um, but it, I, I, I don't know if they'll come out on the winning side of, of all those games necessarily. And I, I have to, I have to agree with that because the Niners, when we go into the injury report in a couple minutes here, if they have some key injuries to the defense, that's going to make life easier for the offense, at least for, from that standpoint, there is no doubt that the 49ers offense has a ton of weapons, but one of their biggest weapons is doubtful for this upcoming Sunday. So, you know, stay tuned for that. Uh, quickly, let's run through the 49ers uh, defensive rankings from last year. They were the third best in total yards allowed uh, in the league last year. So, you know, take that as you will. They did not give up a lot of a, a lot of big offensive plays either from the defensive side of the ball. They were seventh best in total rushing yards and they were sixth best in total passing yards. So I uh, that, that's a, that says a lot that San Francisco 49ers defense didn't change drastically. In fact, you know, more guys like Nick Bosa got better as with age, you know, he was, he's going to rate, he's already saying he's going to be defensive player of the year this upcoming season. So a lot on the other side of the ball, but when we get to the injuries in a minute, there are key injuries to the 49ers defense. That's going to impact the bears. So, you know, Adam kind of from a Madden standpoint, and I don't know if you want to take it from a fantasy standpoint either. The 49ers are always a favorite defense. Uh, kind of how do you see them against this Bears defense? What is the biggest threat to Justin Fields? Uh, well, I think, honestly, Fred Warner is going to be really important because everyone's been talking about Cole Komet, um, and Fred Warner is so good in coverage, right? So it's like, what does that matchup look like? This is where, you know, a tight end who's going to have a quote-unquote breakout season like has to be able to shine against some of the best coverage linebackers in the league, Fred Warner being probably the best coverage linebacker in the league. So I think that's a really, really interesting matchup to watch, especially with all the hype around Cole Komet lately. Um, and then just like their pass rush is insane. So um, trying to just not let Justin Fields get murdered, but it seemed like their preseason strategy was to get him moving, to get him out of the pocket, to, to, to get the that outside zone scheme running. So you got the bootlegs, you got the play action, you got all that. So um, I think that'll help Justin a lot. You know, hopefully we can keep tight ends in to, to help chip block and every now and then, like we didn't do against miles Garrett last year. So um, I'd like to see a little bit of a difference there, but I'm, I'm very intrigued by watching players like Fred Warner and their other linebackers uh, try to cover Cole Komet and how Cole Komet kind of fares with that. And so follow-up question on that. Do you think Cole Komet is going to have a breakout season this upcoming year? Or do you think that he's going to be similar, which last year wasn't bad. He had 600 yards receiving. It's just, they never threw him in, in the red zone. Do you think he's going to stay around that 600 yard mark? Or do you think he can exceed that? I hope he can exceed that. I honestly have no idea. Like I, I liked the pick when they drafted him, um, you know, Ryan Pace loved to, to pick up tight ends. And most of the time they never worked out, but um, I think there's a lot of hope for that. I don't know if I'm personally necessarily, necessarily as optimistic. Um, I, I just, I guess I haven't been that in, impressed with what I've seen from him. Like he's obviously got good hands and good receiver ability, but like you need your tight end in the red zone, right? That's why Jimmy Graham was so dominant, put him out one-on-one -on, -one on the outside and they could, and you could literally just toss him the ball because he was going to catch it. Um, yeah. And I don't think I haven't really seen that from Cole Komet. So I'm hoping he can bring that. I would love to see that. But I guess I'm I'm not that optimistic about it this year. Well, I, hey, you know, I you know me, I'm always optimistic, and I think <laughs> just that another Cole, year, Nick. <laughs> just another year. I think that Cole Komet's going to exceed a thousand yards. That's just I think Luke Getzey is a very favorable tight end guy, and you know we've seen it so far in the preseason the relationship between him and Fields. I'm ex I'm just I'm putting that expectation out there for him. He didn't have a bad year last year, and considerably with the Matt Nagy offense, the 30th passing offense in the league last year and your tight end still had 600 plus yards. He was a top 10 receiving wise, uh, receiving yards tight end last year in the NFL. Yeah. Um, and just, just to add on to that, like a hypothetical, not hypothetical, but an example, like the chiefs last year had a dominant wide receiver in Tyreek Hill and a dominant tight end in Travis Kelsey. Other than that, their offense was really not that high powered, right? Like they had no. it, it right. So like those two positions can open up the field for you. So if Darnell Mooney can really come into his own, which, you know, I'm much more optimistic about that. And then you have Cole Komet. If he can be that thousand yard guy, like 
you have this, the makings of a really, really good offense. Then you just need the play calling. And, and, you know, I'm much more optimistic about that this year than, than last year. So it's possible. And if, and if it does happen, that would be huge for the offense. And you don't necessarily need the dominant wide receiver number two in that situation. Cause we've seen it work with the chiefs with a, a wide receiver one and a tight end one. And Matt Eberfuss is also kind of guaranteed, not, not guaranteed, but made made reassurance for fans that Luke Getze is handling the offense. He is not dipping his hand in there at all. And him and Alan Williams were assistant coaches together in Indianapolis. Well, he was a defensive coordinator, but Alan Williams was his assistant. So they have that good relationship. So everyone kind of knows their role instead of Matt Nagy kind of just dipping his hand in a little bit of everything. So I, I think I think you raise a good point with that. Let's go to the Bears defense versus 49ers offense very quickly. Uh, we obviously, as Bears fans know, this defense is looking very sharp for this upcoming season. You know, 2021 uh, Niners offensive ranking, just to put in perspective, they had the seventh most yards in the NFL offensively. They were seventh best in total rushing yards and 12th in total passing yards. So they have a, they have a high powered offense. There's no doubt about that. They can put yards on the board. They're one of the top 10 also uh, points per game team, according to ESPN stat or just NFL stats as a whole. ESPN gets the same stats from them, but Overall, they look good. They're a, they are a scary offense, and but they do have a, a young quarterback coming in and taking over for Jimmy Garoppolo, who actually is on the injured list right now. So even if Trey Lance struggles, Jimmy Garoppolo might not even jump in. Just a fun little note to put in there. Uh, but the defensive ranking for the Bears shocks shocks me a little bit, and especially from the passing yard overall total. So the Bears had the six best total yards. Uh, so they were the best team six backs defense when it came to total yards they gave up the six least amount of yards if, if just putting that into perspective that's impressive considering how bad the secondary was but the secondary stats shocked me the most they gave up only they were the third best passing defense in the nfl they only gave up a hot on average 191 yards a game but they were this 23rd uh you know ranked total rushing defense. And that was with Robert Quinn, Akeem Hicks, Eddie Goldman, and Khalil Mack. So there, the bears were horrible against the rush last year. And they were sh shockingly good considering we had Kendall Vildor, Luke, she Duke Shelley, uh, Eddie Jackson was not Eddie Jackson, Tayshawn Gibson, senior and Jalen Johnson, but the bears went out and got some key additions like Kyler Gordon, uh, Jaquan Brisker, Elijah Hicks, Justin Jones, Matt Adams, uh, Nicholas Moreau. And then they just claimed Armin Watts from Minnesota on top of it, bringing in defensive coordinator, Alan Williams, and then having a defensive minded head coach in Matt Eberflus. So they made a lot of improvements to the defense that already was very strong by on paper against the pass, but very weak against the run. I think it's going to get better. Adam, what are you most excited about walking into this game for the defense and the expectations you have in 2022? Uh, well, I'm a big Roquan fan, so I just always love watching him play. Literally, that's like always a player that I'm staring at when the ball snapped because he just flies like none other. Um, and I think he rivals Fred Warner for the best off 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 ball linebacker in the NFL and doesn't get the you know respect that I feel he deserves. So, uh, him trying to help shut down that run game, you know, it's not it's not all the guys up front. Um, it's also your linebackers that are huge with that and watching Roquan attempt to stop that run game that the 49ers love to go to, you know, they're like four running backs deep. They're going to run the ball like crazy. That's just what they do. So I'm excited for that. I'm also pretty excited to watch Kyler Gordon play. Um, I did not hate the pick. I actually was pretty happy about the pick. And um, I, I think he is an exciting prospect for, for the bears too, young too, as well. And obviously and him across from Jalen Johnson, like I, I think this could kind of form into like a dynamic duo corner. Cause um I, I don't think you can win with just like one dominant corner anymore. Um, you know, Jalen Ramsey, he, I can't remember the guy's name, but he had a great corner across from him. And that definitely helped the Rams defense because, and you need an emphasis on coverage and we don't necessarily have the, the Khalil Max of the world or the Akeem Hicks anymore. Like we're not, the pass rush probably isn't going to get there. So focusing on your secondary seems to be the direction is that the end that the NFL is going. Um, and then maybe having like one or two strong pass rushers uh, that don't need to be the best in the NFL. But if you're really solid in coverage, uh, you're in you're in good position. So I don't know. Like I, I'm excited to watch the young guys. I'm excited to watch Roquan prove it yet again to the world that he is deserving of a first team All Pro because he's going to do it again. And uh, really putting pressure on Trey Lance and making him uncomfortable because he's going to be moving around too. He's not going to sit in the pocket the entire game. We know that. And 
um, being able to get out and try to keep him contained in the pocket and make him uncomfortable is I'm, sh- I'm sure that's the game plan for the bears. That seems like a pretty, pretty basic game plan against a, a brand new quarterback. So um, we'll see, we'll see the pressure that they can add to Trey Lance. You know, if you can make him uncomfortable enough, it doesn't sound like they're going to pull him out for Jimmy G. It sounds like he's their guy. So they'll work through adversity and, I, I I would love to see the Bears defense kind of step up early on, especially with how young they are and, and give a great team with a great offensive line uh, and great receiving weapons like Debo Samuel and everyone um, some some put some pressure on them early on in the year. I think it, there, there's definitely a good chance and I'm pretty excited for it. I'm all about it, too. I think that this defense is going to put a lot of people like I think they're definitely improved and Alan Williams just brings it to the next level. Not Sean Desai just walked into a storm. A lot of injuries, but this Bears defense is young and they're active, and it's going to be fun to watch this year. They got to so, take the ball away, man. How about some turnovers? Have, Would love to they see were, that. They were thirtieth in turnovers last year, so I guarantee you that's going to you, it definitely increase. Considering the Colts were second last year in turno- defensive secondary turnovers, and Matt Eberflus and Al Williams were a huge part of that. So super quickly, we got two minutes here. Uh, Bears injury report is that Lucas Patrick may not start at center. He might move around. They haven't had him at uh, at center so far this week, even though he's off the injury report because of this thumb injury, uh, Nikhil Harry is still out till week four on IR. Velas Jones jr. Is questionable with a hamstring injury and Dominique Robinson is questionable with a knee injury. Uh, the Niners, the biggest name that you'll hear on the injury report for them is that George Kittle is doubtful with a groin injury for this upcoming game. That's on a my huge... fantasy team. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> ouch. Not on mine. So I don't feel the pain that much, but George Kittle is out and doubtful with a groin injury, but that is the big injury report that we wanted to bring to you guys today. Um, you know, three keys to the game, you know, Adam and I kind of talked about it before and we'll get into the star score prediction. Cause we only have two minutes left here uh, is that, you know, cont- we kind of talked about it throughout the episode, but you got to contain Nick Bosa, you know, y- y- going against a rookie left tackle and Braxton Jones, Obviously, that's a big fact for them. You're probably going to have to put fullback uh, Kareem Blassing Gang, uh, double teaming him uh, with Braxton Jones if he gets Chip high. Him with a tight end, like do something. Do something. Even triple team him. You know, throw Ryan Griffin or Cole Komet back there too, just to make sure that he is as contained as possible. Um, you know, the 49ers do have a banged up defense. So, you know, make sure that you take advantage of that and then make Trey Lance uncomfortable. Adam hit it on her earlier, but a young quarterback, you make him uncomfortable. He's going to make mistakes. Adam, before we head off today, I want to just hear quickly your score prediction. I already said mine to the, to everyone viewing already. I'm going 13 to 10 bears, but what are you going with? Uh, I'll go. I think the, the spreads like seven points. I think the bears cover. Um, or, or maybe push. We'll go 17 to 10 49ers winning. Ooh. All right. Well, that hurts. I would love to pick the bears, but I I do think them covering seven points against a great team would be a good performance for week one. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm always going to say the bears are going to brand new coaching (laughs) staff, entirely new. Everything is new. Like week one is tough, man. So like, I I think covering seven would be a, a great showing. You got it. I agree with you. I appreciate you also coming on to the episode. Thank you, Adam, for coming on. As always, excited for week one, and I hope that you had a good time on the show. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's a blast to talk Bears football. Absolutely. Week one is here. Week one Bears football is back. Soldier Field, Bears, Niners. Stay tuned after for Sunday's post recap. We'll have it all here. But with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde, and we'll see you guys next time.